This is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and this is case 46 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of retrograde crossing via the left internal mammary artery graft. The patient had uh, presented with refractory angina and he had undergone an attempt for canalizing the right posterolateral CTO that was considered to be the culprit artery. He did have a heavily calcified right coronary artery with the posterior descending artery feeling undergrade, although there is a stump from a previously occluded vein graft to the PDA. And then he had an occlusion to a fairly large right posterolateral branch. The left anterior descending artery was feeling from the lima, which in turn was providing collaterals to this big occluded branch. There was also a patent, saphenous vein graft to the obtuse marginal branch, that might provide also some collaterals, although these are pure epicardial and very tortuous and hard to track. So in summary, we have a patient with um, an occlusion of the distal RCA slash right posterior lateral. The occlusion is at the takeoff of the posterior descending artery. And uh, it's about 30 millimeters long. There's a bifurcation of the distal cap that fills via collaterals from the LAD and in the lima. Therefore, given the risk associated with going retrograde to the lima, the approach here was to try undergrade first, either with wire escalation or with undergrade dissectory entry, before attempting high-risk retrograde from the left internal mammary artery. Of note, the patient's ejection fraction was normal at 55%. It was extremely challenging both engaging the right coronary as well as advancing equipment because of the severe calcification. We had significant difficulty advancing those wires and could not actually deliver a microcatheter until after we ballooned the proximal right coronary after artery. After doing that, we inserted the wire into the PDA that is, feel, that is going retrograde into the vein graft stump and then attempted to cross undergrade by using multiple wires through a Corsair Pro microcatheter. Unfortunately, this failed and we could not penetrate into the occlusion. Therefore, we changed into the retrograde approach. We advanced a guide wire and the Corsair Pro microcatheter through the lima and waited a few minutes. The patient remained hemodynamically stable without EKG changes. And then we were able to advance a Sion guide wire, a retrograde into a septal branch. The Corsair Pro was advanced with difficulty into the septal. And then we performed the injection of contrast to determine the course of the collateral into the occlusion. And after doing that, we were able, after several wire attempts with the seal wire as well with the filter FC, eventually to advance the wire into the occluded vessel. Then the Corsair Pro could be advanced relatively easily through the collateral into the posterior descending artery, which provides us with a very strong position for retrograde crossing attempts. However, it was very challenging to engage the lesion, even retrograde, because of the bifurcation of the distal cap. We did multiple attempts with a Pilot 200 that was unsuccessful. And finally, we used a Confianza Pro 12 to enter into the occlusion, which uh, seems to be moving now in sync with the undergrade equipment. We were there able, with significant difficulty and after multiple attempts, to advance a filter XT guide wire that eventually prolapsed into the subindimal space through the occlusion, and then we were able to advance it further up into the towards the proximal cap and the proximal patent vessel. So we now finally had the retrograde knuckle all the way into um, the proximal cap and the proximal vessel. However, we could not advance the Corsair Pro further up and we tried various microcatheters, but we just could not advance them um, through the occlusion. And during this period of time, and we already have been about an hour and a half to two hours into the case, the patient developed the saturation. He went into acute pulmonary edema and we had to stop the case, place an intraortic balloon pump as well as an impeller device 
which stabilized the patient and we had to pull the equipment from the Lima. The cause of the decompensation is unclear, however, ECHO did show new onset mitral regurgitation that subsequently resolved, suggesting ischemic etiology. This case provides several important lessons. The first one is that retrograde crossing using a left internal mammary artery graft can cause profound ischemia, presumably by straightening the tortuosity of the lima graft with the wires and microcatheters that are advanced through it for the retrograde approach. This was probably the mechanism causing ischemia and mitral regurgitation and pulmonary edema in this patient. Second is that use of hemodynamic support can be very important in patients who develop hemodynamic collapse during CTO or any other complex PCI. Whether prophylactic support would have been beneficial is, of course, easy to say retrospectively. However, the patient did have a normal ejection fraction. Potentially, having had done a right heart catheter baseline might have shown an increased feeling pressure that might have predisposed us to an earlier or prophylactic use of hemodynamic support. Third, the case shows is the challenges associated with a blunt and impenetrable proximal cap due to severe calcification, as well as bifurcation on the distal cap. In this case, despite using very stiff guide wires, we were unable to penetrate through the proximal cap. However, we were able to cross the distal cap by using a Confianza Pro 12 and then a polymer jacketed field XT to create a knuckle and, cause, and cross subminimally into the proximal cap. Fortunately, the patient had an uneventful recovery without any further complications. However, he does remain limited by daily angina. Thank you.